Hello, good, good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you are in the world. My name is Grant Dauber. I'm the Director of Fertility Management at the Global Experience Office. Tonight, we're here to talk to you about the STEM experience um, across our STEM-focused locations in the NUN program for the fall of 2021. We'll just wait a minute or so until folks load on. I see there's a, a quite a large crowd this evening, so we're happy to see a lot of excitement around the STEM locations for NUN. Excellent. So I'll just go ahead and launch into it now. I know we have still have folks, some folks coming online. Um, I've been in Northeastern for about seven and a half years, been with the NUN for about five of those. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, we, we have a wonderful group of folks, um, including other folks from my team. We have some alumni, uh, the program, and special shout out to the college advisors who um, from, the, from those colleges that are compatible with Greece, Ireland, and Boston. So Corey College of Computer Sciences, College of Engineering, the College of Science, um, as well as the Bouvet College of Health Sciences on the line now. So if you have uh, questions that are more focused about the academics for those colleges, uh, please reach out to them. Please know that this is not an individual advising session. This is more of a general overview of the academic experience at these locations for NUN. I want to pause right now and toss it over to two of my colleagues uh, to introduce themselves. Emily, do you want to go first? Hello, everyone. My name is Emily Fiabeji. I'm an Associate Director of Program Management with the Global Experience Office, and I work very closely with our NUN program, and I help um, manage the program operations and student and staff support at uh, some of our locations. Excited to see you all here this evening. Excellent. And now if I could have my colleague Maggie from the uh, Peer Tutoring Program. Hi everyone, I'm Maggie Lasciuto. I'm the Assistant Director um, of the Northeastern Peer Tutoring Program here. And I've also been at Northeastern uh, since the, the early 2000s. <laughs> um, excited to um, present to you all tonight. Thank you so much. So once again, welcome to, to all those hopping online. As you are most likely aware, uh, our locations are compatible with specific colleges and majors of those colleges. So if you aren't sure what location your college is compatible with, recommend hopping on over to that website, the NUN website, and reviewing the location eligibility subpage. And that will walk you through all the different majors and colleges that are compatible with locations. Tonight's presentation will focus on the academic experience across um, our STEM for compatible locations. So if you're looking for more general information, a general overview of the entire program, we recommend reaching out to our colleagues in the admissions office um, to ask them for access to one of our previous events in which we gave more of a broad overview of what to expect on the NUN program. Great, so let's go ahead and jump into it. So we'll be talking about, uh, we'll start off a little bit more broadly to hear about the academic policies and, and support across all locations to start off with. We'll hear from some of our alumni panelists this evening. We have representation from all the colleges I mentioned before and all the locations represented in tonight's presentation, which is awesome. We'll hear more about the academic resources and specifications at each of the uh, STEM compatible locations. And then we'll dive into um, a few question and answers from the chat. So please, if you feel like you have questions, drop them in there, we'll do our best to get to them. And as I said before, we also have a team of um, college advisors and program staff on the back end answering some of those questions as well as folks from the admissions office if you have more individual questions about your admissions decision to Northeastern. Great, so I wanna pause now and, uh, and turn the spotlight on our alumni. So if I could toss it over to Haley to introduce, um, introduce uh, themselves briefly. Hi, uh, my name is Haley Norris. I'm from Auburn, Massachusetts, and I'm a bioengineering major um, in the College of Engineering. And I participated in NU in Boston last fall of 2020. Thank you so much. And now we're gonna to talk to Jack. Are you on the line? Hi, uh, yeah. My name is Jack Stevens. I am in the College of Engineering, studying mechanical engineering. And I'm from Lexington, Mass, which is half an hour away from campus. It's pretty close. I did NU in Ireland this past fall and it was awesome. So I'm really excited to talk to you guys today. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jack. Maddie? 
Hey, I'm Maddie. I was in the Bouvet College and I was majoring in health science, but I've recently transi transitioned to behavioral neuroscience in the College of Science. And I went to Greece in 2019 and I'm from Western Massachusetts, which like Mac or Jack is about 20 minutes from Boston. Thank you so much. And Julia? Hi, I'm Julia. I'm from Arlington, Mass, and I'm a cell and molecular bio major, and I also went to Greece in 2019. And toss it over to Keelan now. Hi, my name is Keelan Doherty. I'm from Danbury, Connecticut. Um, I'm in the College of Engineering studying mechanical engineering, and I was in NUN Ireland for 2020. Thanks, Keelan. Caitlin? Hi, my name is Caitlin Close. I'm a third year mechanical engineering student with a minor in material science. Um, I went to NUN Greece all the way back in 2018, so a little bit older, um, and I am from Verona, New Jersey. Thanks so much. I appreciate that all the way back in 2018. It feels like it was 10 years ago now for all of us. Thanks so much, Caitlin. And I am. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ian Chowdhury. I'm from Andover, Mass, which is like 30 minutes um, from campus as well. I'm in the Corey College of Computer Science uh, studying CS, and I went to London in 2019. All right, special shout out to all of our alumni on the call. I know it's uh, Monday evening, so I'm sure you all have homework and, and assignments to work on, but thanks for being here. Great, so to start off, I want to talk about and some of the overarching policies and some of the things to take note of and resources across uh, all locations within the end unit program. The first thing I want to talk about, which is important to, um, to look at as we enter into sort of the midpoint of this uh, enrollment cycle and folks are making their decisions about the program, or maybe you've just made your decision about doing the end unit program. Um, I want to take some time to highlight the course maps, which are available on our website and have been for a couple of weeks. Uh, the course maps are a great tool to give you really a preview of what types of classes you might be taking at a given location. These, um, all the courses listed are, are pre-approved for transfer credits from Eastern, as long as you receive the equivalency of a C grade or better. Um, and that's by the, by the US grading scale. So you don't want to mention that note. One of my, one of my favorite stories about the grading scale and some of the confusions that could happen with international education. Um, and some of our locations, they have a slightly different grading scale. And I can remember a parent calling me um, a couple of years back and really upset their student got D's uh, on, their, on, their, on their report card, um, not knowing that D stood for distinction. Um, so they were completely unaware of that fact. Something to keep in mind as you look at the um, academic policies of the program. When I say they're pre-approved for, for transfer credit, I'm talking about um, a lot of work that's gone into working with the colleges, the faculty, and the associate deans to really approve and vet these courses. We have faculty that work with the Global Experience Office to really look at the courses to make sure that learning outcomes, um, key learning elements are, are matched up with what students would get on the Northeastern campus with their, with, their, with their counterparts. So you do have that sort of guarantee and that assurance that all these classes have been vetted through the colleges themselves and they would not appear on our course maps uh, otherwise. That's not to say that all classes are exactly the same. In fact, I think that um, any of our alumni could probably argue that there is um, a bit of differentiation between faculty and how they deliver the lesson plans, even on the Boston campus, just as there would be with NUN. So you have faculty from Ireland or from Greece or from Boston um, that are really hitting those key points, but the delivery might be a little bit different. The classroom experience, the feel might be a little bit different. And we'll hear a little bit more about that as we talk to our alumni later on in this presentation. The course maps, as I said before, are available on our website in PDF format. Feel so free to download them. Do a bit of window shopping uh, if you're still deciding on your location and think about the type of courses that you want to take and make sure that those are um, at your location that you want to make your deposit for. I do also want to mention that if you want some further detail about those courses, we do have a course description guide on our website that talks about uh, a general overview of each one of the courses and kind of what to expect. Just to highlight briefly for you all, I'm talking about this page on our website in particular. I've chosen Greece as it seems fitting for tonight's presentation. Um, you can read about our, our partner at the American College of Thessaloniki in Thessaloniki, Greece. And you can scroll down to the college compatibility in Greece and pull up any of those course maps that are linked down at the bottom of the page. 
And once you do, you'll see something that resembles this, um, this course map on the screen. This is for the NUN program Greece 2021. This is for the Bouvet College of Health Sciences and the majors listed there. So if you are a health science uh, and combine majors with health science at Bouvet Undeclared, you'll be able to um, look at this course uh, menu, as I like to refer to it as, and start to think about how your schedule will, will kind of unfold at your location. A couple of things to highlight in here. At the top, we have our NUN Global Learning course. That's really meant, um, really meant to help students make the most of their time abroad or, or in Boston with the NUN program. Uh, we did a bit of a revision from, from this past year to focus more on intercultural communication and learning about the country and culture that you are in. There's opportunities within this course to connect with not only your peers and classmates at your location, but also other locations as well. This is all taught by our global experience uh, office staff. Uh, it's fully remote. It is optional, but we do encourage students to register for this course uh, if they want to really uh, engage in the, in the full and new experience. The next portion down are our culture courses. Um, these courses are a requirement of all students. Uh, all culture courses fulfill a new path requirement. So do you have that going for you? Um, this again is helping um, students make the most of their time in their host country. So there could be something on Irish folklore if you're thinking about going to Ireland or uh, Thessaloniki, a city and its inhabitants talking about the history uh, of the people that have resided in Thessaloniki. So really fun stuff. I know there's a lot of co-curricular activities with these courses. So a faculty member could take students um, out into the field, so to speak, walking around the local town and or city to really get to know um, that culture of that location and to make the most of that experience. Underneath that, we have college specific required courses. All students at your location in that college will be enrolled in these foundational courses unless you have prior credit. So if you have AP or IP transfer credit um, for one of those courses, you'll be able to select from one of the elective courses below there. And a lot of that back and forth will happen um, after that May 1st deadline. Over the summer, you'll get a chance to submit AP scores and IP scores to the admissions office and then check in with um, your academic, academic advisor at the university to help make the appropriate selections uh, from the last um, section of this course map, which is the electives. These are all options if you have additional space on your schedule. Um, I will say that although students will be picking their courses before they depart for the location and, kind of, and have that set in stone, students will not receive their schedule until they arrive on site. So I've been talking a lot so far and I wanna pause and I wanna throw it out to Jack. Um, if you could pop on and tell me about your culture course in Ireland and what were some of the highlights uh, of that course for you? Yeah, I would love to. Uh, thank you. So when I was picking my culture course, I looked at the options and I what immediately caught my eye was this called Discovering Ireland's Geology. And this brought my, this caught my attention because it's um, more stem focused course rather than like a college writing or um, just folklore type thing and this was also interesting to me because i looked at the ucd which is the college in dublin like their um, course catalog and it listed that there would be field trips and this was immediately entertaining because it listed a couple of locations including the um, cliffs of moor which are featured in the harry potter movie and they're just like massive cliffs that we would look at the geology of and unfortunately, because of COVID, we weren't able to do those field trips. But as a substitute, which was a highlight, uh, my professor, a geologist from Ireland, he would go to locations and like film these long, essentially labs that we would work with and watch the videos, answer questions, and almost do field work in a remote setting. So that was definitely a highlight because I was tentative um, to do this geology course as it, geology is not my passion but doing it through the lens of an Irish culture and how they teach as well was super cool. And that was probably the overarching highlight because the course was taught through the lens of Irish history, like entirely. So instead of learning about the basic, like three types of rocks and sediments and stuff, it was, you would look at a certain location and look at that place, that place's history and then go from there. So I think that the big things was that it was taught through a very uh, interactive way that entertained me and uh, got me interested in geology, even when that wasn't necessarily my passion going into college. And to give you some insight into how I was affected by the course, towards the end of my time in Ireland this fall, the 
country kind of opened up in terms of COVID stuff. And two of my friends and I who were taking our course, they, uh, we, we decided to go to one of the locations we weren't able to go to earlier. And when we were hiking around, we were looking at all the rocks and sediments and joking about all the stuff we learned. And it was fun, but we actually were able to identify things and talk about uh, like, oh, look at that quartzite. And it was goofy, but we realized we actually learned stuff, even if it was uh, primarily the means the which it was taught was remote packets of location-based work and watching recorded lectures in a field or in like along the coast. So that was the cool part because you would think that it's just lectures of this rock and that trend, but the fact that it was so applied, it made it special to be in Ireland, even though it didn't really feel like I was at times when it was cooped up in my apartment during um, quarantines. So to have that was really neat. And so I recommend if you're interested in um, any kind of, um, I guess you guys are all interested in science, but I would highly, I would highly recommend the course because it's really hands-on as much as you can get. And I can't imagine how awesome it would be without COVID uh, being in the way. So that's my um, two cents on discovering Ireland's geology. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jack. I, if that isn't experiential learning, I'm not sure what is. Frankly, and I, I definitely appreciate the shout out to, to Harry Potter as well. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. <laughs> um, just a couple more words uh, in terms of um, in general, the process of course registration and how that works before we launch into peer tutoring. Um, you may be eager to sign up for your, your courses after viewing some of the course maps online, but don't worry, the process will happen over the course of the summer. Um, this is typical of, of Northeastern in general. Initial course registration will happen early summer, so this will become available in your application status check and you'll receive an email from our office prompting you to do uh, to move forward with the process. Please let us know um, about any existing or pending transfer credits. So if you've taken any APs or any other challenge exams through the university itself, uh, we'll work through those uh, items as they come up over the summer. In midsummer, you'll get a chance to um, review with your uh, Northeastern University academic advisor. So each college will follow a slightly different process. So stay tuned to your Northeastern email for updates. The advisor will make sure that you are taking, uh, making the most appropriate progress with the classes you are taking in the fall. They'll also support making any adjustments for any new AP credit um, or IB credit that comes in or transfer credit over the summer. And finally, I mentioned before, your actual uh, fall schedule, schedule of courses, meaning the days and times at which they meet, uh, you will receive once you arrive on site. Um, we know that folks are excited and, and, and anxious to make plans in terms of traveling around their host countries. I'm sure it would do the same, uh, but we do want to uh, enforce the message. You should hold off on that until you're fully familiar with when those courses meet, just in the, in, in the, uh, in the, in the chance that you are in a uh, Friday afternoon course and, and you have to kind of stick around your, your host city until you um, complete that course before you do some traveling. So. I'll say that as well for the for parents and family, family on the call as well, too. If you want to make those travel plans, make sure that you just touch base with uh, your student to make sure you're aware of their course schedule and when their exams are. Great. So now I want to um, reintroduce uh, Maggie, if you want to come on and talk about the peer student program, which is a great resource for students across all locations. Of course. Hello again, everyone. So my name is Maggie Lasciuto. I am the Assistant Director of the Peer Tutoring Program here at Northeastern. Um, I'm excited to introduce the program and present a little bit about us to all of you um, and how it can positively impact your learning experience at Northeastern. Um, so the Peer Tutoring Program, or PTP as it's known, um, is a free resource available to all Northeastern undergraduate students. Um, the mission of our program is to help students reach their academic potential by promoting peer-to-peer -peer learning, integrating peer tutoring into the curriculum, and reframing peer tutoring as an extension of the classroom experience. The goal of our program is to empower our students by engaging them with the curriculum in order to enhance their learning experience and improve their academic performance. We also assist our students with the learning process in order to help them become self-directed, strategic, and mindful learners. So currently we serve about 3,000 undergrad students per academic year, 
Um, and we are happy and excited to report that we um, have a 99% student satisfaction rate for services rendered. Um, so again, this is a great free service um, that will be provided to the NUN locations um, and delivered online. So it'll be accessible um, booking through the student hub. So you can choose when you're selecting your online appointment between a one-on-one -on -one or a small group session. So perhaps you have friends in the same class and you all have maybe similar questions or want to prepare for an exam together. You can do that with your tutor as long as you're all in the same class with the same instructor at the same new site. And with our peer tutoring service, we do offer it for introductory high demand undergraduate courses. Um, but if you do need tutoring for a class and you don't see that class on the student hub under the tutoring section, you can always reach out to us and we'll help you try to find a peer tutor for that course. So peer tutors can help you with your NUN courses. Um, they are students that have um, taken the class either at the NUN location or on the Boston campus, have done well in the course, been recommended by the faculty, have expertise and depth of knowledge, and are excited to help others with the class and the class content. So to book an appointment, again, you can access us on the Northeastern Student Hub. You'll log in, you'll click on the resources tab at the top, You'll then scroll down to the miscellaneous section and select tutoring, and then you'll see the classes you're enrolled in at your NUN site and click on the class you're looking for help with. An added thing that we have now is that you can actually select so the calendar is visible in your current time zone at your NUN location. You'll get a confirmation email with an online meeting link. Um, that you'll click for you and your tutor and you'll meet them there. And again, you can pick that time zone and find a tutor that's available at a time and a date that works best for you. If you have any questions, um, please don't hesitate to reach us at peertutoring at northeastern.edu. We're happy to help and assist. And again, have a great rest of your time um, and enjoy your time at NUN. Thanks, Grant. Thank you so much, Megan. You're great to have you on the call this evening. Don't worry if you missed uh, pieces about that, about how to how to, how to uh, register yourself for tutoring. We'll have more information uh, in our pre departure orientation than when you're on site, several reminders about some of the resources available through, through PTP. Great, so I wanna um, pause and hear some more from our student panelists this evening. So if I could toss it over to Maddie, um, I have a question for you. And that question is, what was the classroom experience like in Greece? And what did you learn from that experience? So the classroom experience overall in Greece was fantastic. I felt like all my professors, because of the class size, um, they all really got to know me. They were all super personable. Um, I remember specifically my chemistry professor, I was really struggling with oxidation states. She was super accessible. I met with her after class. Um, she really helped me with the material the next week. I answered a question in class about the oxidation states and I got it correct. And like she outwardly was like, I'm so proud of you. And that sounds kind of, I don't know, funny, but just like having that kind of support when you're in a foreign country, you're in new classes, you're in a new environment and the classes are challenging. It was just really comforting. Um, yeah, I loved the classroom experience. And just overall being um, in school in Greece, there was so much novelty to the situation. So I was really encouraged to kind of figure out a work-life balance. And that's something that I'd always kind of struggled with. And in Greece, there was so there was so much to do. I mean, you can travel, you can explore the city, you can get to know there's so many NUN students I know personally from the Greece program that I got to know. Like there's 200 people, there's always someone you to know. Um, and I developed a really close relationship with a lot of people in Greece at ACT who were Greek students. So I was really motivated to figure out a work-life balance. And that was really important coming back to Boston um, when, um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of local. So I didn't feel like as much urgency to get out into the city of Boston, but I definitely learned that in Greece, which has been so important. Thanks so much. That sort of 
little story about a smile to my face this evening about that faculty member. And I'm going to toss it over to um, Ian. What was your favorite course you took during your annual experience in England? What made that course stand out? Yeah, for sure. So um, I went to England. Um, if any of you are interested in CS, um, it's a different college altogether. So it's the Corey College of Computer Science. And, you know, if you're interested in maybe majoring in it, you would probably be going to England. Um, so that's what I did. I went with like around 30 other kids who were all majoring in CS. And the interesting thing was that uh, in order to like stay in line with the Northeastern curriculum for the CS classes. So Northeastern teaches CS different than a lot of other um, institutions do. Um, we were actually accompanied by a Northeastern professor itself. Uh, her name was, or her name is Dr. Strange. Uh, she was super helpful. Um, a TA came with us as well. He was a student from the Boston campus and they stayed in London and they taught us the um, first two you know, introduction to CS classes. So my favorite of the two was uh, discrete structures, which is like a discrete math course. And um, yeah, like I know that sounds kind of scary, but uh, the best thing about it was that all the CS kids in England, they lived in the same dorm. So, you know, we would go over assignments. You could walk into anyone's kitchen really, and you'd see like three or four kids, you know, working on the assignment the night before, a couple of nights before. So you have a really strong support system. Um, the professor is super helpful and, you know, we have like access to online forums in which you can communicate with her and she, they hold office hours, the TA and the professor. Um, so, you know, that was really my favorite class just because of the content and because I was able to, you know, like make friends and connect with my other CS peers through the uh, material. Um, and, you know, outside of just the CS courses, you are, you take like a cultures course, which Jack talked about. Um, and I particularly took uh, my elective was like art history. So that's something that I was really interested in in high school, but I never really had an opportunity to take it. So even though you are taking CS courses, you can still take um, cool electives. And I really liked the fact that we had field trips. So we would see the paintings that we studied in the classroom. We would go to the different museums and, you know, really get to look at them. And it was a great, you know, bonding experience being able to go out into the city. Um, so yeah, there's a balance between just like the STEM courses and the electives, which you might be interested in taking. So overall, it's a great experience. Thank you. Thank you so much. I do want to highlight um, that sense of camaraderie and that sense of almost family that students um, form pretty close bonds while they're on a new end. Um, it's, it's a part of our program model developing that cohort, um, each location. So whether that's cramming for the next exam or making food together or going out somewhere to explore. Um, there's a lot of that happening all the time and that's, that's an important part of the experience for students. Thanks so much for that. And for all our panelists. All right, I do wanna move it along here a little bit and dive into some of the locations uh, that are compatible with our STEM programs. So I could toss it over to my colleague, Emily Theobedji to talk about um, the first location. Wonderful, thanks so much, Grant. And I'll just note that this is just a first glimpse of each of our different programs. So we really encourage you to spend some time on our website, reviewing each of the locations in greater depth. So we're gonna jump in with NU in Greece. So in NU in Greece, students study at the American College of Thessaloniki. It's known as ACT for short. ACT is a gated university campus. It's a 20 minute bus ride from the student residence which is a hotel. Um, the drive is up a mountain overlooking Saloniki. And some of the NUN courses are integrated with other ACT students and others are just NUN specific courses. As far as uh, learning support resources, ET ACT has a learning hub that is home to both the writing and math centers. And students can visit the Learning Hub anytime they'd like to receive some support and tutoring services um, in writing or math subjects. And for students who are looking for academic and disability accommodations, ACT accepts diagnosis and recommendations that were identified and determined prior to arrival. So students should submit their request for accommodations through Northeastern's Disability Resource Center. Once these are reviewed, the DRC will communicate uh, with our team, uh, the program management team, and we'll work with ACT to ensure that accommodations are made available. 
And now I wanna turn it over to both Julia and Caitlin. And I would love to hear from you both. What was the highlight of your NUN experience in Greece? Yeah, I absolutely loved being in Greece. I think the highlight of my experience there was really just all the people and connections I made. Um, the people of Thessaloniki were just absolutely so welcoming to the students. They knew like there was, um, they were kind of aware of like, oh, the Northeastern students come in each year, um, whether it be going to a coffee shop or going out to a restaurant, they were always so excited to talk with you, especially when you used like, some of the Greek um, terms or like phrases you learned in class. Um, it, they were just so kind and I just felt it was really great to experience that um, like another culture, even though there was a little bit of a language barrier, it was really special to be able to interact with different people in that country. Yeah, so I mean, I will echo what Julia said. The people of Thessaloniki are absolutely amazing. Um, and they're like so excited to see the Northeastern kids every year. Um, I had a lot of really great experiences in Greece, but my favorite memories often come from the fact that American College of Thessaloniki organizes these like trips and excursions that you can sign up for. And so I got to do some like incredible things. I went canyoning. I'd never heard of canyoning. I had no idea what it was. It's like jumping off cliffs and like swimming in rivers and stuff. That was pretty cool. Um, I climbed Mount Olympus twice, which was like one of the highlights of my life. Coolest thing ever. Um, summited a mountain in two days with a bunch of people who became my best friends. So just like those opportunities that I really wouldn't have gotten to experience pretty much anywhere else um, really made my whole time in Greece worth it. Wonderful, thank you both for sharing those experiences. Wonderful memories for sure. So now we're gonna transition over to NU in Ireland. Um, in Ireland, students study at the University College Dublin, UCD for short. UCD is a large green residential campus and it's just outside the city center. It takes about 20 minutes to walk across campus and on your way, you're gonna pass beautiful sculptures and a giant pond uh, that you'll see lots of students kind of congregating around and studying at. Uh, some UCD classes are integrated with other UCD students and some are NUN only. UCD also has a math and writing support center that students are encouraged to use for additional support and tutoring. Students requiring academic or disability accommodations should indicate this on their NUN enrollment form. And a member of the Global Experience Office uh, will, a uh, program management team will reach out to you and um, speak with you about next steps, about setting appointments and the documentation that you need to complete. I'm gonna pass it over to Keelan now, and I would love to hear from you, what was the highlight of your NUN experience in Ireland? Thank you, Emily. Um, I really loved Ireland. Um, as Julia and Caitlin said, the, the culture is very special to each location, and I really like that part. But my favorite part would definitely be exploring Ireland. Um, I have family uh, there, so I've been there a handful of times before I went uh, for NUN, but spending so much time there allowed me to find different places that were very fun and exciting to explore. Um, of course, we did the tourist uh, spots in Dublin, but we were also able to find hidden gems, kind of places off the beaten path that were very cool and different than what a typical person would probably find on their on their path in Dublin. Uh, some of my favorites were kayaking in the Dublin Bay, hiking on the Dublin mountains, mountain biking, um, hiking along the cliffs in Dublin, so there was a lot of uh, outside kind of activities that I think were, were kind of special to Ireland. It's a very green country, so you might as well go outside and embrace what, what it has there. Um, but as Caitlin said about the special like excursions, the school took us to the Cliffs of Moher and the countryside in Wicklow. And those were probably my two favorite 
favorite activities um, of all of NUN. It was really special to spend this time with my new friends, um, one of them being Jack, who uh, talked to you earlier about the courses. Um, we became close friends and we're actually rooming next year together, but coming back to Boston now, um, we, we still take that kind of exploring and adventurous like attitude around Boston. Uh, we try to find things that are a little different, but still have some excitement and fun with it. So that was my time in Ireland. And I hope you have just as much fun as I did. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much, Keelan. And I think you gave us a great segue into our next location, which is NUN Boston. So for our NUN Boston experience, the School of Record uh, is the Northeastern University College of Professional Studies. So classes taken during the NUN Boston program will be represented on a student's Northeastern transcript as transfer credit. We anticipate that courses will run in their usual modalities, um, but we will have some contingencies for virtual courses if needed or required. Um, students will commute to campus um, by foot or public transportation from the student accommodation, which we will be sharing soon. So keep your eye out on our website. Um, most NUN Boston courses will be primarily NUN Boston students and class sizes will really range based on the different uh, courses and subjects. Um, in addition to the Northeastern Peer Tutoring Program, which you heard about this evening, NUN Boston students have access to other Boston-based academic resources. This include the Writing Center and the library and all their wonderful first year experience librarians. Um, the Northeastern Disability Resource Center um, completes all evaluations for disability accommodations for NUN Boston. So if you are approved for an accommodation during the fall semester, the same accommodation will apply um, in the spring semester as well. Um, you can find all the information you need about uh, the DRC at Northeastern on their website. And now I'm gonna pass it over to Haley and I would like to hear from you, what was the highlight of your NUN experience in Boston? Hi everybody. Um, first of all, just congratulations for your admittance to the program. Um, it's definitely tough to pick just one highlight, as I'm sure it was for, um, for the other panelists, like for their locations. Um, but I think that one that stands out for me, uh, we had community council. So like many of you are probably familiar with student councils, like back in your high school, student government. Um, so I was involved in our community council. We stayed in the Westin Copley Hotel. So we just planned fun events for the other students there. Um, and it was nice because despite the restrictions that were put in place, and there were like certainly a ton, um, we were still able to plan very successful events. So like one of them, for instance, we had a dessert tour um, so we purchased desserts before and students could explore the North End and like pick up different desserts. I'm sure you've heard of like Mike's pastries. I don't know. Um, so that was definitely fun. And then there were other programs as well that were planned by um, our ICs or international coordinators. So that helped you get to know other people. Um, we had an excursion to Cape Cod. Um, we had a paint night different like Zumba activities and we would go on like group dinners. You could sign up for a self care night and they like dropped off like face masks and stuff at your room. Um, so those programs were fun to get out um, following all the COVID restrictions and guidelines and just like get to meet new people. Um, something that was like a little scary but ended up being a highlight um, was the whole random roommate situation. Uh, my roommate from NUN is like one of my best friends to date. So that's something that like I was a little worried about that ended up being a highlight. And I think just like to wrap it up with like making connections with other students, like having that smaller pool allows for you to have classes with a lot of the same people. 
So I know that helped me like for study groups. Um, like I would have like an engineering course and like chemistry course with the same people so we could just like get all of our studying done at one time. So yeah, those were just a few of the highlights that I found. I'll give you guys. Thanks so much, Haley. I could go for that dessert tour right about now. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. Um, great. So now that we've talked a little bit about the location options, let's uh, look ahead. Um, we encourage you to spend some time reflecting on the academic offerings at each of our locations, the location details, and your specific interests and needs. And once you've reached your decision and you feel that NUN program is the right fit for you, you can make your first non-refundable deposit through the application status check. The first deposit is due May 1st and um, the second deposit is due in June. And please note that uh, only, uh, only international locations will need to do the two deposits. Um, so you must make your deposit to select your location. Um, and then he, after you do that, keep an eye out on your Husky email as we will be sending you really important information and paperwork, information about visas and orientation and all the wonderful things to get you ready for your NUN experience. So on the screen, you'll see some really key contacts um, to stay in touch over the next few weeks and months as uh, questions arise and as you are um, preparing for your semester. So please take note of those. And we just wanna say a really big thank you to our academic advising teams who are here today on the chat, answering all your questions um, and also our admissions team as well. And um, NUN is first and foremost an academic experience and the, the folks that uh, are supporting us today are the ones who are really helping make sure that that academic experience sets you all up for success during your NUN experience. So thank you once again. Um, and so this concludes our presentation. We might have time for maybe one question, but we really wanna thank you for your time and attention and encourage you to break out of the ordinary with Northeastern University. Thanks so much, Emily. Uh, I'm gonna squeeze a couple of questions in here if we can this evening. Uh, Haley, do you have any questions from the chat or some trends that you're seeing you wanna to toss out to Emily and myself? Yes, great, thank you. We've been getting a ton of questions and we're working really hard to get as many in as possible, but I've been seeing a lot of questions just asking about um, classes and how many classes um, a student can expect to take and if it varies by location. So Grant, maybe you could take that one. Yeah, sure, um, great question. So you'll notice on the course maps, um, it might have you pick two or pick three of the electives, depending on which location you are uh, considering. Uh, we do this because we work closely with our college, our, our, our colleges and our international partners um, abroad to make sure that the um, contact hours and the, um, and the courses themselves will transfer and give you a full semester worth of credit. So if you look, for example, on the Ireland course maps, you'll see there actually are five courses you just have to um, choose from. Uh, because those courses transfer into three credits. So nothing unusual, I'd say, uh, this happens all the time across the U.S. as well. The registration happens to be more of a more of a four by four, so four credits and, and four courses, although that does vary depending on labs and other, other academic offerings. Um, so be, so be mindful of that. You might not have the exact same schedule as your counterpart, let's say, in Greece, that you would have in Ireland. Is there another quick question you can whip out there before we end? Yeah, possibly maybe a quick one. Um, talking about, uh, let's see, a quick one. Maybe is it true that NUN students take pass fail courses? So I can take that one. So NUN students have to earn a C or better in their courses in order for their credit to transfer to Northeastern. So it's really important that students take their courses seriously, one, to set them up for academic success, and two, so that that credit can transfer. Once it does transfer, it'll show as um, transfer credit. And so that's why sometimes 
folks think of it as pass fail, but really you should see your course as you would any course and try your hardest um, to get all the learning you can out of it. Excellent. Thanks so much. I know there are a ton of questions. Apologies, we weren't able to dive into uh, any more than that, but we want to be mindful of our, of our timing this evening. Thanks so much everyone for coming out. Um, hopefully you got some more information to help you make your decision or to or to reinforce the decision you've already made to, to enroll in the annual program at one of these locations. Again, reach out to us with further questions to our email or reach out to um, the colleges if you have questions about um, your individualized experience in academics. Thanks so much, take care, bye.